This lecture concerns antibiotics being prescribed in pregnancy and lactation. Concerns amongst healthcare professionals about the possibility of fetal harm can result in a reluctance for them to prescribe antibiotics for pregnant women. There are also concerns about medication crossing into breast milk, which can lead to women being erroneously advised to stop breastfeeding. However, it's important to see that there are two sides to this equation and that failure to treat maternal infection in pregnancy and lactation may lead to maternal, fetal and infant increase in morbidity and mortality. So what are the potential adverse effects of drugs used in pregnancy? Well, teratogens are agents that can cause fetal harm in utero. And for medications, this depends on the specific drug, also the dose, the gestation of the fetus and also the duration of exposure. Drugs are most likely to be teratogenic in the first trimester and these can cause congenital abnormalities. However, it's important to remember that only 1% of congenital abnormalities are caused by medications. In the second and third trimester, when organs are formed, exposures are much likely to cause growth restriction, functional abnormalities, or affect the neonate after delivery. What's the evidence for the safety of antibiotics in pregnancy? Well, for many medications, including antibiotics, definitive evidence of safety is lacking because clinical trials almost always exclude pregnant women. And we have to get information on safety of drugs from other sources, such as case reports, case series, cohort studies, and meta-analyses, as well as post-marketing surveillance and pregnancy registries, which may be industry sponsored. We can also get evidence of safety from animal studies. And this forms uh, part of the assessment of drug safety in pregnancy. However, animal testing doesn't necessarily predict fetal abnormalities in humans due to differences in physiology and development. The doses used in animal studies are often significantly higher than the therapeutic doses used in humans, and so the effects may over be overestimated. Only 30 of approximately 1,200 animal teratogens have been shown to be teratogenic in humans. The FDA in America has a risk classification for drug use in pregnancy. A is when there have been adequate and well-controlled studies which have failed to show a risk to the fetus. Classification B is when animal studies have failed to show a risk, and there, but there are no adequate and well-controlled studies in women. Grade C is when animal studies have shown adverse fetal effects, but there are no adequate studies in women and potential benefits may warrant use. And category D is when pos there's positive evidence of human risk, but the potential benefits may warrant its use. And X means there's positive evidence of human risk, and the risks involved in the use of the drug in pregnancy clearly outweigh the potential benefits. However, this type of risk classification can be misleading. And in 2015, the FDA no longer uses this risk classification due to concerns that it may be easily misleading. Many healthcare workers and pregnant women perceive there to be an increased risk from category A, B, C, D through to X. But this isn't the case. Categories C, D and X are based not just on risk, but on risk weighed against benefit. Many antibiotics in category B, however, this is often based on lack of information rather than evidence of safety. And categories do not distinguish between risks based on human versus animal data or differences in severity or frequency of fetal toxicity. The new FDA pregnancy and lactation labeling rules will require all medications to be labeled with all relevant information from three population groups, pregnancy, lactation, and females and males with reproductive potential. Information must be included in three areas to allow clinicians to assess the risk and risks and benefits. There must be a risk summary, there must be clinical considerations, and they must supply the data. Regarding lactation, exclusive breastfeeding is the feeding method of choice for all infants. The immunological and nutritional benefits promote infant health and survival. So we must use breastfeeding whenever possible. 
potential infant effects of maternal medication depend on the amount of drug in breast milk and how much is absorbed orally by the baby. The amount of drug in breast milk is rarely sufficient to affect the infant and is often less than a sick infant will receive if prescribed the same drug. Let's look at some antibiotics that are commonly available in South Africa. The following slides will give you a practical guide to the use of antibiotics in pregnancy and lactation. In turn, we will look at antibiotics which are safe for pregnancy and lactation and for which there is extensive experience and use. Then we'll look at antibiotics for which there is less experience, but, when, but they should be used when there is an indication. Then we'll look at antibiotics which should be avoided unless there is absolutely no alternative. And then we'll look at quinolones and cotramoxazole as special cases because these often cause confusion. Let's look at common antibiotics that are safe for use in pregnancy and lactation. Penicillins are generally safe. The one caveat is coamoxiclav, which should be avoided in women at risk of preterm delivery and in the third trimester because of the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis in the baby. Cephalosporins are generally safe as are the macrolides, erythromycin, clarithromycin, and azithromycin. Clindamycin is generally safe. And metronidazole is safe, although the 2 gram dose should be avoided during breastfeeding. Here are antibiotics for which there is less experience, but you may need to use them when they are indicated. So carbapenems and vancomycin, they are both only used in hospitalised patients and you may be able to get specialist advice to see if the benefits outweigh the risks. Antibiotics to avoid in pregnancy but safe in lactation are the aminoglycosides. They're always used in hospitals because they're given intravenously and the risks and benefits can be weighed up. They're safe in breastfeeding because they're not absorbed orally. Antibiotics to avoid in pregnancy and lactation are tetracyclines such as doxycycline, but safer alternatives for this usually exist. Now let's look at two specific examples, the quinolones, specifically ciprofloxacin and moxifloxacin, and cotramoxazole. Regarding ciprofloxacin, animal studies suggest it should be avoided, but more recent data shows that there is little risk in humans. Moxifloxacin is an essential drug for patients with drug-resistant TB, and so the benefits outweigh the level of unknown risk and should therefore be considered continued in pregnancy in patients who've got drug-resistant TB. Cotramoxazole, or Bactrim, pregnant, pregnant women should continue taking pro prophylaxis during their pregnancy and during breastfeeding as the risks of life-threatening infections outweigh any potential risks. The same is true for infections with high mortality such as PCP and toxoplasmosis. So in summary, there is sometimes a reluctance to prescribe antibiotics in pregnancy and lactation for fear of causing harm. This must always be weighed against the harm caused by untreated infection. The evidence for safety or risk is omitted, and risk classification can be misleading. Drug levels in breast milk are usually low and risks are often outweighed by the benefits of breastfeeding. You can find more information on specific drugs in the South African Medicines Formulary or SAMPH.